Hello and welcome to another Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a four color artifact deck as suggested and voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring a Brea, Ethereum Shaper as our commander, a four mana 4-4. Four four. When it enters the battlefield we get to make a pair of 1-1 one one Thopter tokens, and then for two mana we can sacrifice two artifacts to either deal three damage to a player or planeswalker, give a creature minus four minus four until end of turn, or gain five life. So quite a few options, although usually we'll be taking out creatures with the second ability. And then at taking a look at the rest of our deck, usually I would subdivide it into different categories. This time I'm just going to lay it out by curve, since almost all our cards are either artifacts or have some sort of artifact synergy. And then uh, starting out with our zero drops, we've got Bobble to maybe draw, can combine quite nicely with our fetch lands. And as you'll notice in our mana base, we're playing all of the fetch lands we have available, since these can easily fix our mana in a four color deck by getting our various shock lands or basics. And then I'm also playing the cycle of bridges, so these enter tapped and count as artifacts that are indestructible, so these can also contribute towards some of our artifact synergies. And then we've got a Mox Amber to give us a mana boost, Ornithopter as a free artifact creature. We also have a small Thopter sub-theme in the deck, with Brea of course also making Thopter tokens. Then there's Asper Sentinel, which is just a good card that happens to be an artifact. We've got Portable Hole as one of our few removal spells, since we can always count on Brea for additional removal. And then a Terramander can eventually adapt on the cheap to grow into a 5-5 flyer. We've got a Chromatic Star as something we can play early and then maybe sacrifice to Brea's ability and then when it goes to the graveyard it still draws a card. Same with cards like the Terrarion and Wizard's Rockets since the card draw ability is kind of on a separate line here and not tied to having to sacrifice it. And then a Retrofitter Foundry is one of the main payoffs for playing a bunch of Thopters as we can now sacrifice them into 4-4 Construct tokens instead. It's also very nice alongside Brea. And then a Volt Scourge will often play for 1 mana, has a 1-1 flying lifelink. Moving on to 2 mana, we've got more Thopters with a Barbed Spike that comes attached to an equipment. We've got Ingenious Smith, which can find an artifact among the top 4 and slowly grow over time. Oswald Fiddlebender can sacrifice an artifact, and then we get to search our library for an artifact that's 1 mana more expensive and put it in play, so that can also set up a fun chain of artifacts. We've got Thopterist as the only alchemy card in the deck that can make an Ornithopter each turn to further progress those Thopter synergies, and then we'll also get to give them 2 extra power. We've got Scrap Heap Scrounger, which can also easily come back from the graveyard, so we can keep sacrificing it. The new Marionette Apprentice, kind of a smaller version of Marionette Master, a bit easier to cast, but it still drains the opponent when artifacts and creatures die. Goblin Engineer can be a fun tutor effect, putting an artifact in our graveyard, and then we can later get it back by sacrificing something else. Legion Extruder can deal two when it enters, and then can also sacrifice artifacts to make 3-3 Golem tokens. Yotia declares war, another ornithopter generator that can also act as removal on chapter 2. The Mechanaut gives our artifacts a 1 mana discount, doesn't help cast Brea on turn 3, but still plenty of other artifacts that will benefit from the Mechanaut, and then once Brea dies the commander tax can still maybe get a discount. We've got the Gear Drake, which can grow as we sacrifice more artifacts. We've got Cranial Ram, which also gets better the more artifacts we have in play, plays well with all the flying creatures we can generate. And then the Anvil can make 1-1 one, one tokens while draining the opponent. And then we've got some 2-mana ramp artifacts. I'm only playing the ones that make colored mana, so we can cast Brea on turn 3. So we've got Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, as well as Ornithopter of Paradise, and the new Solar Transformer, which will have 3 energy, so it can make colored mana 3 times. And then we've got our Icar Wellspring, which draws when it enters and when it's put in the graveyard. So we can uh, sacrifice it to Brea to generate a bit of card advantage and maybe get it back. And then we've got Smuggler's Copter as just a great vehicle, plenty of ways to crew it as well. And then a Steel Overseer to start pumping up all our artifact creatures. And finally, Sword of the Meek at 2 mana can also be sacrificed, and then whenever we make a 1-1 one, one creature somehow, whether it's with Brea or some other effect, we can return it from the graveyard, so that can also keep coming back over and over. Then at 3 mana there's a Tempered Steel, giving our artifact creatures plus 2 plus 2, so that's essentially 6 extra power and toughness just from Brea. We've got Emery, which we can usually play for just a single blue, which can also start recurring artifacts out of our graveyard. The Duplicator can also generate a bit of card advantage, even though it's kind of slow, but I'm just trying it out here. Then there's the Gadgeteer, discounting activated abilities of artifacts, so it makes it easier to activate Brea and some of our other effects, like maybe the clue tokens we can generate. 
Then there's the Master Thopterist making 1-1 one, one Thopters when we cast an artifact spell. We've got the Synthesizer, one of the better payoffs for an artifact deck, making these giant construct tokens that grow with the number of artifacts we control. We've got the World Walker Helm making map tokens whenever we make some other artifact token. Then there's Malkator, which will make a 3-3 Golem token, and then turn 3 Malkator into turn 4 Brea. We'll also enable Malkator's second ability, which will generate another Golem token if three or more artifacts entered under our control. So those have great synergy. Then there's Sahili to make more servo tokens when we cast non-creature spells. Can also maybe turn one of our artifacts into a different artifact. The Chaos Crafter can sacrifice either artifact creatures or non-artifact creatures to make either treasures or 1-1 one, one constructs, so plenty of synergy throughout. Thran Spider helps us ramp by making a Power Stone token. Nettle Cysts is an equipment attached to a Germ token thanks to a Living Weapon, giving it plus one plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. And then a Scrap Trawler also plays well with all the sacrifice synergies, as we can keep getting artifacts back from the graveyard that are cheaper than the thing we sacrificed. And then at 4 mana, or well, technically Metamorph, we can still cast for 3 mana, thanks to the Phyrexian mana cost. We can copy a creature or artifact that's on the battlefield already. Thousand Moons Smithy can easily transform into the Barracks and start making more of those giant soldier tokens. We've got the Familiar, which we can also play on the cheap, thanks to Affinity for Artifacts, making the opponent a discard when it enters. Jora can also draw whenever we cast a historic spell, so that includes all our artifacts, but also sagas and planeswalkers, for instance. Then a Karn is another way of making these giant construct tokens. Mystic Forge, a great way to generate card advantage, as we get to play artifacts and colorless spells off the top of our deck. And then moving on to 5 mana, there's Tazeret to make Thopter tokens or draw cards. Can draw two if we control three or more artifacts. Nahiri's Resolve is a nice way to flicker some of our artifacts that maybe have an Entrance Battlefield ability, so plays well with Brea as well, as we can essentially exile them and bring them back on the following turn, and our creatures also get one extra power and haste, so it can also play well with a bunch of smaller tokens. And then a Might Stone and Weak Stone can maybe take out a creature or draw extra cards when it enters while still making mana for artifacts. And then moving on to our curve toppers, we actually only have one real 6 drop, so the curve of the deck is relatively low since we're not playing a ton of ramp cards. And then Brooded Clan has great synergy with all the other tokens in the deck, especially if we manage to make a construct token, now turning all our tokens into those constructs. And then we've got a bunch of cards with affinity, such as Thought Monitor drawing two cards. Herald of Anguish can make the opponent discard and can also be used as removal. And then Imskir Iron Eater can also draw a bunch of cards when it enters. And these we can usually cast for pretty cheap, thanks to affinity. And then there's also Kappa Cannoneer with Improvise. So here we do have to tap some of our creatures, but we'll have plenty of Thopter tokens we can easily tap for Improvise purposes. Getting the Cannoneer in play, which is then very hard to remove, and then can also grow and uh, maybe become unblockable until end of turn. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, plenty of fetch lands, shock lands, the Innistrad dual lands as well, so the cycle like Sundown Pass is here. And then, uh, as we mentioned, the bridges for more artifact synergy, and then the check lands play well with the fetch lands and shock lands, as they'll often enter the battlefield untapped. And then a command tower, of course. So no real room for colorless utility lands because our commander is pretty color intensive and just one of each basic. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, it's the battle of the four color decks facing Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. Could be a poison deck, could be a super friends deck. Either way, it's going to be a tough matchup. We do have a decent hand with an early Thopterist plus Foundry, so that's a powerful combo. And then I want to fetch a white, a red perhaps, to have access to all colors. And my lands entering untapped. And then we can hold Mox Amber until after we play Joyra. A good rule of thumb when Jora's in the deck is to hold the zero mana artifacts until we need them. Opponent fetches. Now we can play Thopterist, which hopefully can uh, survive a few turns. And Broody Clan will have to wait for a while. But uh, especially nice if we can make some construct tokens and then turn all tokens we have in play into those. And our opponent explores. So next turn they can already deploy Hatraxa. 
we get to make Ornithopter, and uh, yeah, Ornithopter also very nice with Ajora. So, just uh, hoping we can hit our fourth line drop next turn. Since Mechanaut doesn't actually discount any of our four drops. At least not in a meaningful way. It's gonna be a survey. So our opponent keeps on ramping. And then it seems fine to upgrade Ornithopter into a construct. No lands, but an Iron Eater. So yeah, I guess if I deploy both my zero drops, we can still cast it to hit my land drop for the turn. Even though we miss out on all that uh, Jora value, we still get to draw cards some other way. So cast Iron Eater, and then I'll still be able to tap Mox Amber for black or red, which isn't too relevant. Okay, pass the turn. And then Mightstone could be an answer to Atraxa, but I imagine they'll probably play a board wipe first. Flooded Strand to fetch. So this is 7 mana. Could be an emergent ultimatum for all we know. But nope, opponent gets a Surveil Land. And Eternal Wanderer. Alright, so they can leave us with one creature. Most likely Ornithopter, which we can then turn into a 4-4. Alright. So we can at least still take care of the Eternal Wanderer. And then now we could deploy Jora. Although it's not going to be quite as amazing as when we had some zero drops left in hand. So what's the alternative? Play Brea and then hope to draw land so we can play Bruticlad and deal quite a bit of damage. I think the game's still going to go on for a while, so maybe Jora to set up the card draw engine is more important. Yeah, let's go with Jora. And then now Mox Amber can maybe help cast Mightstone if needed. A Voidwing Hybrid points towards a Poison deck. They did use their only blue mana, so they can't cast a Traxa anymore. And now Cornucopia, so that can fix their colors. And the uh, counter is also quite nice when you proliferate. And now Evolution Sage. Alright, so not too bad. We get to untap with Jora, it seems. And we don't have a poison counter they can proliferate just yet. So what are we thinking? Play Brea to start making 4-4s. Four can draw of Joyra. Although we could also play Mightstone. If I draw a blue fetch land, or any fetch land really, we can still play Synthesizer afterwards. That might be better in the face of a potential board wipe. Alright, we found blue. And uh, let's see... I guess we don't have a way for this to enter untapped at the moment, so I'll still draw. And then, uh, yeah, since we don't have Swamp or Island, may as well play the tap land. And then we'll still cycle Star with Jura. And then we can potentially fix for another color when needed. And uh, send in the 4-4. Okay, so bonus down to two cards in hand. Hopefully those aren't too devastating. And then next turn we can make something pretty fun happen. Opponent plays Atraxa. And Replicating Ring, more mana, and one card left. And it's Incubation Druid, so all their cards are on the table. They will get to proliferate some things. But I feel like we can take over from here. Can finally get a land so Catacomb enters untapped. So we can go Synthesizer into Brea, and then next turn Bruticlad can turn everything into giant construct tokens. 
And then I might want to fetch first so I don't undo my scry. And uh, Barbed Spike isn't bad with Foundry out. So could keep that on top. Could also use Brea's ability here to take something out, but I don't think that's a priority. Play Spike. And the next run's gonna be pretty glorious. Can still send in the 4-4. And if Atraxa were to attack, we can trump it with a Thopter and then before damage, sack it to Foundry so our opponent doesn't gain any life. Opponent top decked Ashiok, that's fine. I am that which nightmares them Glad we got our fetch lands out of the way since Ashiok can potentially prevent us from searching. All right, this is why Bruder Clan is in the deck to combo with our constructs. And they're not even going to bother attacking. So, doesn't matter whether or not I turn this into a 4-4 four four, since it's about to be a construct anyway. And then I can play apprentice first as well. Fabricate, make another token. Since all tokens will have haste. Go to attackers. And smash. That's well over 100 damage. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw here, facing Aurelia, the law above. So it should be a pretty aggressive deck. This hand is not the worst. Uh, we can curve Marsh Flats and then Catacomb into Sundown Pass. Don't have the best plan against big flying creatures, other than maybe activating Brea. Alright, so I need to fetch for something that's either blue or black. Blue will also help with Mechanaut, so yeah, what land to fetch here is pretty tricky. Probably just something white for Esper Sentinel, and then it needs to also be blue or black for Catacomb. But then I wouldn't be able to play a turn to Mechanaut, but I guess we'll just Cold Steel Heart instead. So white, blue, would be Hallowed Fountain. Play Sentinel. And then next turn, Cold Steel Heart on red. Put it with an Inti. Steel Overseer might be worth it. Although if I can get the Mechanaut in play, I can more cheaply cast these artifacts. So it might be worth waiting a turn. The sooner we get Overseer active, the better. And then next turn I should still be able to play Mechanaut, Rockets, and Cold Steel Hearts. Even though turn 2 Heart could have set up turn 3 Brea. So Inti grows. Finding a Swords, that's too bad. That's the perfect answer to Steel Overseer. We do get to draw, at least. So, play Mechanauts. And then I'm gonna play Cold Steel Heart first, in case they have removal for Mechanauts. Since this is more important to get on the battlefield. And name... probably don't need red. Black, so we have double black. Don't have any Thopters on the battlefield, but that might change. Reprieve my free artifact is maybe not the best plan. And 
and I'll attack for one. Okay, so next turn we can deploy Brea and then start turning Thopters into 4-4s. Four Four Put our opponents on the beatdown plan, Shadow Spear growing into some more. And this uh, Archivist could have been pretty good with all the fetch lanes we're running. Next turn we can expect Aurelia. Okay, so I think the plan's still Brea. Can also maybe play a tapped land. And then we still have Foundry to sack a Thopter. And then next turn Brea could also start sacking author stuff for the various abilities. Ooh, Blade Historian for double strike. So this now hits for 10. We can take out the Historian next turn, but uh, not before taking a beating. And I guess it's gonna be 12 damage here. Yeah, that happens. Can still uh, do this. Brea could also gain some life back if we're in danger of dying. Alrighty, so if I were to play Karn, I'll still have two mana for Brea available. And then make a large Karnstruct. That seems reasonable. And then I probably have to start playing defense. Evil cannot a army. Yeah, can't take too many risks. And then we'll see if we need to keep the Thopter as an extra flyer or not. Opponent runs out Aurelia. So if they were to attack with everyone, they would uh, trigger the ability to draw. So we might want to take out Blade Historian first, sacking Wizard's Rockets, and then at this point maybe Esper Sentinel. Could also take out Aurelia, but then we're not really handling Inti all that well. What if I let them attack? Then I can chump Aurelia with the Thopter, sack that and Rockets, and then shrink down Inti. Although still could go up to a 3-3 double strike essentially. I guess we would still have a decent block with the Construct. So maybe I'm actually fine just taking out Aurelia. Although I guess the Construct shrinks down if I activate Brea. Yeah, let's just let our opponent attack. If they want to. They're just attacking with Aurelia. So now I need to respond before it gets too large. Opponent finds Godric, which they won't be able to play. The fact that they have a land means they can still maybe play Aurelia next turn, so I'm hesitant to sag the Thopter into a 4 4. So I'll just take my turn. And then we can play Sahili into Bobble. Make an extra token. Karn's probably happy to make another Karnstruct. And then keep Brea's ability available. And then we'll start attacking here. Opponent takes 12. Not gonna sank the bobble until I have to. So they can replay Aurelia. 
But looks like they're just interested in attacking with Inti, maybe. We can let them, since we can remove double strike at instant speed with Brea's ability, hopefully. Assuming no tricks. Could also just block with a construct first, and then see what the response is. If they have instant speed removal, they would still trample for lethal here. So that is a reason to maybe block with more stuff than necessary. So something along these lines. And it's going to be a chance for glory instead. Okay, so we'll respond. And I think target Blade Historian. So they get to take out Brea. They get to take an extra turn, but we should have enough defense here to survive. And then uh, if they don't top deck a burn spell, we should win. They can give Aurelia trample as well. So I guess they're getting very close to lethal. Since that's five power trample in the air, can put my flyers in front. And that's only barely enough. And God's Willing could have done it, perhaps. Naming Blue. Alright, but this should be enough. And then our opponent loses to Chance for Glory. As we fall to one life. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Yuri, Black Rat Sacrifice. And sadly, a pretty slow hand with two tapped ones. But uh, yeah, I think still keepable overall with eventually Signet to speed things up. And Foundry quite nice alongside our Thopterist. Potent fetches Blood Crypt. And it's gonna make a treasure. Make sure Foundry resolves. Kalein makes another treasure. And Emery the draw, so we can Signet into Emery. And Ornithopter would be nice to get back. There's Yuri. Fetch lands can also trigger it, so there's plenty of synergy with all 10 fetch lands now potentially available. Although probably not playing the blue-green one, for instance. Okay, so I think it's going to be Master Thopterists and then uh, get back Ornithopter and can start sacking Thopters to make constructs with the Foundry. And pass a turn. And then if I keep sacrificing Ornithopter, we can keep getting it back with Emery. A Molten Collapse, destroying Creature and our Foundry. That's too bad. We'll get an activation out of it at least. Say our opponent had a revolt or I guess descent enabled. Haven't seen that art before. Okay, so we could play Brea, which I guess still triggers our Thopterist. Could also go Sahili plus Terrarion if we're afraid of some sort of sweeper for creatures. But getting Brea in play means our Nahiri's Resolve could be pretty effective going forward. So yeah, couple options. Now we don't have the best attack into Yuri, since they can just sack treasure to grow it. But maybe next turn with Brea's ability at the ready.
And this opponent's gonna hit the mother load. Alright, let's see what they find. How about the Balrog? Pretty good. So, cannot be blocked except by legendaries. So that's just gonna hit us for seven. Since I don't really want to double block, although I guess that's an option. And then when it dies, they get to destroy an artifact or creature, which is probably my other legendary. So it would be a pretty fair trade. Don't have a guaranteed fifth land for Nahiri's Resolve, otherwise I would prefer to keep Brea alive. Yeah, you know what, let's just trade while we can. did find the land after all. Now here is Resolve would still pump my team quite nicely. Can even attack with our construct, although it wouldn't really be flickering anything. But maybe that's okay. So we're on the B-Town plan. Put on trumps. And uh, I don't think there's any advantage to flickering these. Maybe the arcane signets. Aragdos joins up, can get back the Balrog. Alright, that was a reason not to trade. And our opponent's gonna try and get more damage out of Yuri. But they're also facing quite a bit of damage on the way back. So we'll see how aggressive they get. That's 18 damage. Maybe they can sacrifice Yuri, we're dead, but it doesn't seem like they can do it right now. Never mind. Flare of Malice, yeah. The free pitch spells, those will do it. And now 18 damage, 9 from Yuri, 9 from Rakdos. And that's game. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Grist, Voracious, Larva. Well, that does potentially answer artifacts and enchantments. But uh, so be it. We'll probably have to mulligan a hand without untapped lanes. This is better. And then we want a red source. Probably want double white as well, so a red white. Play rockets. And then we've got multiple artificers that don't mind some random artifact they can sacrifice. Utopia Sprawl, naming black into Aftermath Analyst. And two lands in Graveyard, Ornithopter the draw. Okay, so for now play Oswald. Probably no real reason to play Ornithopter right away. We get to untap, metamorph the draw. So if we play our Chaos Crafter. I can sack Ornithopter to make some treasures and then use those to activate Oswald and sack rockets to get a two drop. Yeah, that seems fine. So pay a white, sack the rockets, and then anything that ramps is probably fine here. 
although we have quite a few options. Icar Wellspring is also a good one to sacrifice as it'll keep drawing. Sword of the Meek is also quite appealing since it can come back. So yeah, couple ways we can go about it. Yeah, I guess we haven't seen Sword of the Meek in action yet, so we'll try that out. And then next turn I can sacrifice it. Maybe play Brea and bring it right back. Opponent ramping with Analyst. So they need to get something back out of the graveyard to transform Grist. Analyze with Collect Evidence. So that can find any creature, maybe a Reclamation Sage. Nope, it's going to be Underrealm Lich. Okay, so that can also set up some powerful combos or just fill the graveyard. But uh, yeah, we get to have some fun here. If I go for Smithy, we're not making a 1-1. One -one. Could make 1-1s one -ones with the Chaos Crafter. And that plays well with Sword of the Meek. Yeah, so just sack Sword, make a pair of 1-1s, one -ones, and then play Smithy. And then I can still use Oswald to maybe sack the Sword once again. So yeah, those uh, two Artificers play perfectly with each other. Can get a 3-drop now. And how about a Simulacrum Synthesizer? Scrap Trawler is also pretty fun with all these Sacrifice Synergies. But uh, let's make some huge tokens. And then probably just looking for extra lands at this point. Even though Anvil also kind of plays well with his whole Sacrifice Engine. Could also get a Herald of Anguish down. But Smithy will get me two large tokens. Okay. And then we can start thinking about maybe some five mana artifacts. Smithy can maybe get like Might Stone and Weak Stone, which can remove the Lich, even though it can become indestructible, as we can just decrease its toughness. So that might be the move. And Beanstalk Giant for ramp. And there's Grist. And get to untap. Could transform the smithy, but I think I'm just gonna sacrifice it here. So I'll decline. And then step one might be to indeed sacrifice smithy. Get might stone. Answer the lich, trigger synthesizer. And then Metamorph could copy the Might Stone and Weak Stone as well. So that seems good. So we can clear a path. Opponent's got an Undying Malice. Which will bring Grist back. So that transforms, but our opponent still doesn't have any blockers. And yeah, from here we should have just about enough to deal lethal after playing maybe a couple more artifacts. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Xenagos. So our opponent's plan is to ramp out some large creatures, give them double power and smash for a lot of damage. And yeah, that's a pretty effective game plan most of the time. Is this hand good enough to stop that? Don't really have any early Thopters to go with Foundry, no white mana until we play Transformer, but then I guess my lands are untapped. I'll give it a try. And then we'll start with Foundry, turn to Transformer. 
do want to play a Malkator before we play Brea, ideally, so we get an extra token out of it. But I guess what we can do is still play Brea, and then next turn I could maybe use Brea's ability, or I can still go Overseer plus Malkator, and then by sacking a Thopter to Foundry we'll still get a third artifact entering for Malkator to make an extra Golem token. So Vala's not bad either. So next turn they could already play Xenagos. And I'm pretty happy making a 4-4, which actually draws off Silvala, or I guess if it's tied, it doesn't draw, but that's okay. Alright, so we'll stick to the plan here. Can go Malkator into Overseer. Could get a planes to save myself a little bit of damage. And then we can attack before we sacrifice stuff. And then end of turn. Make another golem, so yeah, not a bad board state for turn four. And next turn, Overseer can also activate to grow the team some more. Defile our Vigor now. And draws off Silvala. And we can also use Brea to maybe shrink it down if they block. But not before they get some more counters out of it. Gilded Goose also pretty good. Yeah, this is scary. Kappa Cannoneer is the draw. So, I assume step one is play Barbed Spike. Gives me another Thopter I can sack to the Foundry as well. And then we have Brea's ability at the ready. So that in combination with Steel Overseer means even my 3-3s have a decent attack. Opponent did block. So we do get to trade for the Defiler. So let's sack a Thopter to make a 4-4. Activate Overseer. Activate Brea. Sacking Transformer and Barbed Spike, I want to say. And yeah, that's good enough for a concession since Defiler actually just dies to the 5-5 Brea. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Astor, Bearer of Blades. So, an equipment deck. And what do we think of our hand? We've got our own equipment, plays well with Brea, but we're not close to getting Brea on the battlefield. So I'll take a mulligan. This is a little bit better. Start with a tamped bridge. And then Marsh Flats wants to get a blue source. Could make it blue-white. Oof, turn one Ragavan. That's never fun. So now maybe Wellspring into Synthesizer, into Brea. Find a Joyra. And our opponent hit Oswald. Could actually be useful for them. So they cast it. And I'll get a blue source. And then we can put a card on top that they won't be able to play with Ragavan. Although those are actually both pretty good for Ragavan to hit, so I guess we'll bottom both. Or we could let them have a bobble and then I'll draw into a Nettle Cyst, which is pretty decent. I think we bottom both and hope they hit a land instead. Opponent's going searching for a one mana artifact. 
and it's gonna be a beat stick and they can immediately equip the champion making two treasures and Ragavan hit a lane so glad we bottomed but yeah we're already pretty far behind taking damage off our mana also doesn't help and now a stoneforge mystic perfect for these equipment decks possible they have the various swords they can search up to have protection from any given color or a colossus hammer pretty good with astor as well all right so just gonna play Bray, i think and i could fetch mountain to save myself a little bit of damage Although possible, I'll need more blue mana later. And then we trigger Synthesizer. We've got a decent number of artifacts in play at least. So 7-7 seven, seven Construct. And next turn Brea could start activating. Sacking Wellspring feels good, same with Terrarion. Oof, and they had a Sigardos aid. So means free Colossus Hammer on one of their creatures. And they can play it at instant speed. So yeah, we're just dead here. Since one creature is always going to go through. And there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, turn one Ragavan. Kind of decimated us. So had I fetched a basic, I would have had one more life to spare. And we might have survived barely. But still would have been a pretty rough position to be in. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing the new Elder Demon that can make blood tokens and sacrifice them to reanimate stuff. We've got what looks like a Keeper. Turn 1 Sentinel is always powerful. Overseer can grow it. And then Sword of the Meek is something we're happy to sacrifice to Brea, as we can pretty easily get it back out of the graveyard. Opponent's got the swords, but we'll get to draw at least. And then now Mechanauts looks good. Can play free Chromatic Star. And next turn with a white source play Smithy already. And I guess Chromatic Star makes the white mana. So that answers that question. Throw in for a bit of self mill. Since they are on the reanimation plan. Okay, so play Smithy. Bobble grows our token. And then I'm not sure yet if I want to sacrifice it or keep it around. I guess hitting an untapped land for Brea would be nice. Smithy requires five things to tap to transform it. So we're not quite there yet. Yeah, I'll just take my turn. All right, Extruder's perfect, answers Ornithopter, and I can deploy the rest of my hand. Next turn, transform Smithy, and then uh, get an extra token when playing Brea. And then Overseer can start pumping the team, zero points under immense pressure. Bloodcaster can also make blood tokens, but yeah, opponent is just too far behind here, knowing we can transform Smithy and play Brea. Alright, so we got to see our four-color artifact deck in action, and got to showcase some pretty sweet synergies. There's a lot of ways you can build a Brea deck, since you have access to all these colors. Brea, as a commander, is decent, but not quite as powerful as when it was first released. Power creep has definitely occurred in the meantime, but it still remains a fun option if you like these types of artifact decks. I built it to favor more artifact synergies. You could theoretically also just play Brea and then include all the best cards you could be playing in every one of those colors and ignore any sort of artifact synergy, but I feel like that kind of defeats the purpose of playing Brea as your commander, kind of like playing the first sliver without any slivers in it. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.